untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. For today's deck, my Patreon supporters voted that I should build around Croaking Counterpart, the 3 mana rare sorcery from Midnight Hunt that creates a token that's a copy of target's non-frog creature, except it's a 1-1 green frog, and we can also flash it back out of the graveyard for 5 mana. So a very interesting take on a clone effect, that's a callback to Cackling Counterpart from the original Innistrad. Of course we do get a cheaper flashback cost here, and we can also target opposing creatures with our counterpart, but if we really want to get maximum value out of it, we have to be playing a lot of creatures with powerful Enter the Battlefield abilities, and ideally those creatures also have stat modifying abilities, so we're not simply left with a 1-1 token. And that's what a lot of the deck building decisions were based on. At 3 mana for instance we've got the full playset of Briarbridge Tracker, a 2-3 human scout with vigilance that when it enters a battlefield lets us investigate, so we get a clue token we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card, and as long as we control a token the tracker gets plus 2 plus 0, so it's essentially a 4-3 with vigilance, and if we copy our tracker with counterpart we get a 3-1 tracker, being a token itself it will always get the plus 2 plus 0 bonus, and we also get an extra clue token, so that's pretty good value. Then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Master of Winds, a 1-4 Sphinx Wizard with flying that when it enters the battlefield lets us draw two and then discard, and whenever we cast an instant, sorcery or wizard spell we may have the Master of Winds base power and toughness become 4-1 or 1-4 until end of turn. So if we copy it with counterpart we get to draw two and discard, so that's already a bit of card advantage, and then we get a 1-1 token that can still turn into a 4-1 whenever we cast an instant sorcery or wizard spell, and of course flashing back the counterpart is an easy way to enable that ability and still hit for 4, so we don't really notice that we got a 1-1 frog instead of a true master of winds. Then we also have the full playset of Spirit of the Elder Guard, an 0-4 snow creature bear spirit that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a snow land card, reveal it and put it into our hand, so it can even search up our two copies of Faceless Haven if we want an extra creature land threat. And then the Spirit of the Elder Guard gets plus 1 plus 0 for each other snow permanent we control. So even if we copy it with our croaking counterpart, it's not going to have 4 toughness, but it will still have power equal to the number of other snow permanents we control, so it will be very threatening, as well as providing a nice enter battlefield ability. Then we also have two copies of Quandrix Cultivator, a 3-4 that when it enters the battlefield lets us search our library for a basic forest or island card, and then put it on the battlefield untapped. So not the best in terms of stats with counterpart, but getting an extra land on the battlefield is still great value, and that also makes it easier to then flash back the counterpart, as we'll have more mana available. And then topping off our curve we've got the full playset of Mind Flayer. This is probably the most exciting creature to copy with counterpart if we're facing a creature matchup as a 3-3 creature that when it enters the battlefield gains control of target creature for as long as we control Mind Flayer. So a great creature to copy and steal all the opponent's creatures with, and then it doesn't really matter that it's a 1-1 instead of a 3-3. Then at 4 mana we also have two copies of Asika's Chariot, the powerful 4-4 legendary artifact vehicle with a crew cost of 4 that when it enters a battlefield is joined by a pair of 2-2 green cat creature tokens, and whenever the chariot attacks we create a token that's a copy of target token we control. So besides copying the cat tokens or maybe clue tokens from tracker, we can even copy tokens we get from croaking counterpart, which can be especially effective if we copied something like Mind Flare and can now start stealing all of the opponent's creatures. And then looking at the rest of our deck, we do need some early acceleration to hopefully get to 4 mana on turn 3, which is where Lotus Cobra comes in handy. A 2-1 creature with a landfall, saying whenever land enters a battlefield under our control, we add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool. So very synergistic with Evolving Wilds, which is why we're playing it over the blue-green tapped snow land, as well as playing well with the Quandrix Cultivator, since the land comes into play untapped, and we potentially get more landfall triggers, we can often still play something afterwards. And then we also have the full playset of a Root Coil Creeper, which is a 2-2 that can tap for 1 mana of any color, can tap for 2 mana of any color that we can spend to cast spells from our graveyard, so it can help us flash back the counterpart. And then we can also pay a blue and a green, tap and exile the Root Coil Creeper to return target card with flashback we own from exile to our hand. 
So we can get back a croaking counterpart that we've already flashed back. So that's a ton of extra utility thanks to the creeper. In fact, we can even copy the creeper with one of the counterparts, flash it back, maybe copying something else, which means we can sacrifice the frog creeper to get back that very same counterpart over and over again, which means we essentially get infinite croaking counterparts if a game goes long enough. And then we also have the full playset of Blizzard Brawl, giving us some cheaper interaction. There's no sorcery that lets us find one of our creatures with an opponent's creature. And if we control three or more snow permanents, our creature also gets plus one plus one and indestructible until end of turn. Also a nice combo with a cultivator, since we can get an untapped forest and still cast a Blizzard Brawl afterwards. And then finally, two copies of Augur of Autumn, another new addition from Midnight Hunt 2-3, that lets us take a look at the top card of our library at any time, and we can play lands from the top of our library. So also has a bit of synergy with Evolving Wilds, shuffling the top of our deck. And then as long as we control three or more creatures with different powers, we may cast creature spells from the top of our library as well. So that's more card advantage, and also plays well with the shuffle effects from Evolving Wilds, Spirit, as well as the draw and discard from Master of Winds. So there's a ton of synergy there as well. And then the mana base, as we discussed, includes two copies of Faceless Haven as an extra threat that we can also search up with Spirit of the Elder Guard, and then our Evolving Wilds to go with Lotus Cobra, 10 Snow-Covered Forests, and 8 Snow-Covered Islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand's a little bit slow to get going, but looks keepable enough. And then I probably have to fetch up a forest. Alright, Cobra definitely helps. Still gonna go ahead and fetch a forest here. Does mean I might miss out on the double blue for Master, especially if Cobra dies. But Augur is also likely to find me more lands. Opponent on a mono black zombie deck here with Champion of the Perished. And it does seem like they have a 1 mana instant in hand, probably Village Rides, which could sag Ghast, killing Cobra. Blue-black zombies it is. So, expecting the Cobra to die here. But then we can still play our Augur, hoping to hit some lands for next turn. Spirit of the Elder Guard will also be useful. Alright, so we're set up for the late game here. Just gotta hope we can actually hit our fourth land drop in time. Nothing from our opponents. And there's a land on top, perfect. And then could play Spirit of the Elder Guard to ensure my next land drop, although that would shuffle away the Chariot, which should be powerful here, so I kind of prefer playing Master at that point. And maybe discard one of the counterparts, which we can still flash back. They might have a counter spell here, but that's okay. So we'll draw two, and then there's a land on top. Do I get greedy and discard land? Yeah, sure. With spirits, we'll find more lands if needed, and we know there's one coming up. Don't want to attack into Faceless Haven, but a Soul Shatter will kill our master, that's fine. Still got an extra card out of the deal. Right, Haven's gonna start attacking. It's our opponent with a pretty passive start. Play line of the top. Creeper. So... Don't have a super mana efficient turn ahead of me. Playing Chariot is always good insurance. What I want to set up is a turn where I can copy one of my creatures with counterpart and then use a chariot to copy that token right away. 
which may not happen immediately here, but I think going for Chariot is still fine. Also gives us a bit of insurance in case of a blood on the snow. Village rights to draw two, so opponent may be setting up a sweeper. And there's a meat hook massacre for three. That works. Alrighty, so what's next? Could play Spirit of the Elder Guard plus Root Coil Creeper. And then there's no way for me to play the Faceless Haven now if I want to play Creeper afterwards. So I can still tap like this to get Faceless Haven. And then play the Islands. And then I can sneak in an attack with Chariots. I think I'm still the beatdown in this matchup, so I'm not too afraid of taking a bit of damage from Faceless Haven. And now with the Creeper in play, we've got a lot more mana to work with. So it's going to be easier to set up those Croaking Counterpart turns. All their opponents going to pass with... Six mana up, another master is nice. So what are we thinking? Augur of Autumn does have Coven enabled if I animate a Seekas Chariot. Could just play a master, maybe a Briarbridge Tracker. Could play master, start copying it with Counterpart, hope they don't have spot removal. So a lot of options. Having the master in place seems nice because that just sets up counterparts, giving the master four power. So let's start there. Infernal grasps my spirits. I think I crewed a chariot then. With the hope of copying my Master of Winds token. So draw to discard. Evolving Wilds can go. And we'll see if this works. It does. So we get to draw two discards. And could get rid of one croaking counterpart since I can still flash it back, especially with Creeper. And then attack with the chariots. And copy the token. Alright, draw to discard. So this was a good turn. And what do I get rid of? Could be Quandrix Cultivator at this point. The least threatening of the four mana creatures. Opponent can trade Haven for Chariots, which is fine. They're just going to chump and maybe take out a Master. Yeah, that works. So we're still in a very good position. Even if they wipe the board, we can easily re-establish a presence with double counterpart in the graveyard, plus a chariot that can copy our tokens. So our opponent's gonna need something special. Another massacre. That works. 
I guess it's a good habit to make some mana. Alrighty, so what's my plan? If I play tracker, I can copy the tracker and then copy the token. And make a lot of clues. So I only had to use one card for my hand, and we got three creatures and three clues. That's the power of Crook and Counterpart. Another Shambling Ghast is okay. Blizzard Brawl's not bad. So, could play Mind Flayer still, Shambling Ghast. Could play another Spirit of the Elder Guard to get extra Faceless Haven. Just a wealth of options here. I'm okay trading a couple trackers for shambling ghasts. That doesn't bother me. So how about I play spirits? Get an extra haven. Flashback on spirit. And then we can crew and smash. One mana short of doing this with Mind Flare, but I think we'll be just fine. Let's copy another spirit here. So our opponent needs yet another board wipe. Our hand is still full. And we still have double haven to pressure them. Not to mention our clue tokens. So if they have a board wipe in hand, they'll make a treasure. The fact that they're killing my spirit means they're gonna have to top deck. You can barely notice that this is a frog in disguise. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Up against an aggressive goblin stack. I think I still fetch with Evolving Wilds now. Playing an untapped land is still kind of the same as playing and fetching with Evolving Wilds with Cobra in play. It only becomes an advantage if we have multiple Cobras. And having more untapped lands is going to be important against an aggressive deck where we can't afford to stumble. Opponent does have a shock to deal with Cobra, which was to be expected as I didn't have a turn 2 play. But luckily we have a Briar Bridge tracker on three, and then Chariot's a nice way to stabilize. Even a play with fire pointed at our face. Opponent stuck on two lanes, so it's all spells in hand. So we can expect a tracker to eat another burn spell as well. But we still got a clue out of the deal. So still up on that exchange, and then chariots can be pretty tough for them to fight through one by one. We are running a little bit low on spells in hand. So hopefully we find a nice creature to copy with counterpart. If not, I can always try to make more cat tokens by copying the chariot and keeping the original. A relic robber does not have a profitable attack. 
and another counterpart. So probably fine to start cracking clues. Not her counterpart. Okay, let's crew the chariots. Attack. And then make some more cat tokens here. So I'll keep the original. Bandit Lord to pump the team. That's fine. Still no great attacks. And trackers, a little bit more exciting to copy with counterpart. So, how about we play tracker? Copy it. And then I can crew, maybe using the tracker itself. And then copy an additional tracker here. Make more clues. So much value. Opponent takes it. So not sure what they're planning here to deal these last 14 points of damage. Another bandit lord can help. But we've got so much power and toughness in play. So, assuming they have another burn spell, put three cats in front of Bandit Lord so it still dies. At which point, I can trade a cat for a Javelinier and a Tracker for a Robber. Seems relatively safe. And they're just gonna save the relic robber instead. Fine by me. And do we have lethal here? If I send faceless haven, yeah, our opponent's probably chumping, if not just dead on board, onto the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Cobra into spirit, ideally. Opponent with a turn one cleric class off a snow covered plains, so they might be playing the faceless saving combo. For now, turn to aspirin, still quite strong. And uh, sure, I'll go with Cobra. And then Evolving Wilds could actually generate extra mana with double Cobra in play. So if I play another Cobra and then fetch with Evolving Wilds, I can still play Spirit afterwards. It seems pretty nice. And then I want to Blizzard Brawl one of these as soon as possible. And probably gets an extra island over an extra haven. And I'll hit for two, fine to trade. Spellbinders can have a look. Probably making counterpart more expensive. So that's gonna be five on the front and then five to flash back. Nope, goes for the Blizzard Brawl instead. Counter on Spellbinder, and no attacks on the ground. Master of Winds is a nice one too. So I could counterpart copying Spirits and then still Blizzard Brawl. Taking out... It's really unclear what. Or I could play Master of Winds 
plus Root Coil Creeper and then do some counterparts next turn. Which I also like. So we'll play Master. See what we pick up. Double Tracker. One of those can probably go. And do I want to attack with the spirits? Not really. And the creeper will also help with flashing back counterparts. Take five. Another blizzard brawl. So your opponent could be holding up a removal spell, which could punish me for copying something with counterpart or fighting with blizzard brawl. So that makes it a little tricky. Let's say I Blizzard Brawl with the Lotus Cobra, which I don't mind if it dies. I can still take out Spellbinder. So... Let's start there. Change Power and Toughness, see if they kill Cobra in response. They don't. In that case, I think I still wait on the counterpart and then could go tracker plus another blizzard brawl. Maybe this time fighting with Spirit of the Elder Guard or another Cobra so the entire team can attack. Take out Aspirants. All right, now they've got the Vanishing Verse. All right, so our patience on Counterpart, I think, paid off. And uh, we still get to smash. I'll keep Spirit back. Second Cleric. Alright, time for counterpart shenanigans. Copy master. Augur Phantom seems fun. So I'm a little bit short of doing anything else impactful here. Since uh, this can make two mana for flashback, but I'm still one short. So I guess I'll just play another Augur, maybe hope to hit a line over the top. And then I can crack my clue. Although I might have wanted to attack first. Ah, that's okay. Draw the counterpart and hit for four. And then Tracker could still attack since we still control the token. Sure. Opponents at seven, and we're not lacking value here with double counterparts. Opponent did have the crippling fear, wouldn't quite have been enough to wipe the entire board, and I'm sure we would have been able to figure out a way forward with Mind Flare coming up to steal the opponent's stuff. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. And then I think I'll still fetch here. Get my islands. Unlikely to be very beneficial with Lotus Cobra unless we draw a second copy. Hopefully it survives so we can play a 4-drop next turn. Jadar, so a blue-black zombie deck perhaps. And there's Haven. So I can play either Master or Cultivator. Let's go with Cultivator. And get an extra island. And then could offer the trade for Jadar, but I'll hang on to Cobra for now. Sedgemore Witch. 
Right, I'll gladly steal that with Mind Flare. And we've got a backup. And we'll pass it back. Another Witch. Opponent passes and a Blizzard Brawl to draw. Well, we've got options. And they're all pretty great. I kind of want to play the Master in the hopes of drawing a land so I can also play Counterpart afterwards. All right, we hit, but man, having to discard a Mind Flare seems kind of crazy, but I think I'm gonna do it. And then make a mana, counterparts, copy Mind Flare. Steal the Witch. And we'll start attacking. I guess Cobra can get in there too. Opponent trades. So there could be a sweeper in our future. Still have a Faceless Haven. Mind Flare in hand and a counterpart, so... Opponent just going for hunts into Sciences. Yeah, there's a... Uh, a reasonable chance they're dead, since I can Blizzard Brawl, this turns into a 4-powered creature, we get rid of their only blocker, and I can animate Faceless Haven. So, yeah, I think that checks out, so let's Blizzard Brawl. And animate. All right, quite a bit of damage to spare, so good to see the power of Mind Flare plus Counterpart. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, assuming we can hit land number three. And fetch up a forest for a Cobra. Turn one Den of the Bugbear into Javelinier. An aggressive red deck can easily have answers for my turn two Cobra. Double Den into Fireblade Charger times two. Come on, land. There we go. Play Spirits. And then. Could be okay to get Faceless Haven. I think I'm gonna play it safe and just get a forest here. That way I can maybe double Blizzard Brawl or a counterpart into Blizzard Brawl next turn. Bandit Lord's gonna pump the team. Could also try and steal the Bandit Lord next turn with Mind Flare if it survives. Spirits can block Javelinier. If Charger attacks, I don't really want to block with Spirit, because then we would just trade. I could block with Cobra to trade for a Charger. Which is reasonable, and then next turn my turn would be Counterpart into Blizzard Brawl. Which feels okay. And then wait on the Mind Flare. Because if I Mind Flare the Bandit Lord and they can kill my 3-3, I'm going to be in a bit of trouble. And then I'll take two to the face. Another Cobra I don't think changes anything. And then now I can afford to get Haven, perhaps. And then I'll Brawl Spirit with Bandit Lord. And probably still better off to hang back. Mm, 
Battlecry Goblin can activate, but I've got reasonable blocks. Opponent's just sending it. So this definitely blocks Battlecry Goblin. And then I probably just take five. Because blocking anything else will result in me losing my creatures. Alternatively, I could put the sixth one in front of Battle Cry, and then block Javelinier with my Spirit of the Elder Guard. That's also a line. How close am I to just killing my opponent? Definitely getting quite close. Yeah, let's take five. Oh, another Spirit certainly helps. Get another Haven, just in case. And a need for Blizzard Brawl here. I could Brawl Fireblade Charger with my One Toughness Spirits, so it doesn't die to the one damage. Hit for 16. And then I don't see my opponent killing me from this board state. And now every single creature we have is lethal. Another battle cry. Sure. Maybe if they had another one drop they would get close to killing me, but still not quite. Alright, and then just gotta turn my creature sideways and that'll do it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. I'll need an extra land along the way. But Augur can help me hit more land drops and so can Spirit and Master. Alright, so it's gonna be a bit of a sweat next turn to see if we can draw land. And druid class from our opponents that are ramping, and sadly we missed. So now it's as if the opponents were on the play. And it's gonna be a bit of an uphill battle. Can't really afford to miss another turn. That's one of the downsides of Cobra over a creature that just taps for mana. Alright, there we go. And then probably go for Spirit of the Elder Guard to guarantee my next land drop. And I think I'm going Island over Faceless Haven since we have more spirits coming up. And probably won't be attacking with Haven anytime soon. So it should be a good matchup for Mind Flayer for opponents just a green ramp deck. Can steal whatever big creature they try and ramp into. Chariots, always powerful, could be followed by a Renan 7, but then we can maybe steal some of the tokens they generate. Could use Croaking Counterpart to copy Spirit. Still would have two mana left over, basically, which is not enough for anything else significant. Could just play another Spirit. Although it is sort of nice that we can trade the spirit token for chariot instead of trading an actual spirit that has more toughness. So I'm not opposed to this idea. And then now I should probably get Haven and play it. And I'll just pass it back. And then what's Somewhat likely to happen is their opponent plays Ren and Seven, makes a token, Cruise Chariot attacks, copies a token, can trade my 6 1 for Chariot, and then next turn steal the untapped token to pressure Ren, although they'll still have the cats to block with. So we'll see. Alright, it's gonna be an old growth troll instead. Times two. That's acceptable. So 
So we haven't given them a great opportunity to use like a Blizzard Brawl yet. So I might want to wait on Mind Flare until I can copy it with Counterpart to get some immediate value. This turn I essentially have 6 mana, so it could be more efficient to like play Augur and play another Counterpart. There's another one on top, so now I don't feel too bad about playing another counterpart for my hands. Although I suppose I would want to copy Spirit, which will then shuffle, so I lose the other counterpart, making it more difficult to play Mind Flare and copy in the same turn. I guess that's just par for the course here. We'll make another Spirit token and fetch up forests, or maybe islands, since we have a bunch of double blue in hand. Blizzard Brawl, not a bad one on top of the deck. And we'll pass. So just want to keep hitting my land drops. I'm happy if we can keep the board the way it is. And eventually we can start playing Mind Flare and copy it, which will make it very difficult for the mono green deck. Sciences finds another forest. And Innkeeper. And a field trip, probably getting Mascot Exhibition. Goes for Pest Summoning instead, okay. No attacks. Can play a Tracker for free. Seems fine. Land of the top for free, which lets me play Master of Winds. Or I could play Cultivator and keep going. Sure. Get to Shuffle. Get a Forest. Make two mana and there's another counterpart waiting for us, so next turn I could pull the trigger on the Mind Flare plus counterpart. And then now, I don't mind brawling, let's say, spirit with troll. And then attacking with the indestructible spirits. Now our opponent will be able to maybe copy the troll token with chariots, but that's fine. So yeah, not sure how our opponent's gonna get out of this. Maybe a big player like the Tarask, but even then I think we'll be okay. Another innkeeper. So they can gain some life. Alright, there's Ren and Seven at long last. So they can maybe copy the Tree Folk token. But they're not gonna like my Mind Flare. We know they don't have removal in hand, so the coast is clear. Master of Winds will then also be a way to pressure their Planeswalker. So does our opponent copy the tree folk here? Looks like they're going for it. And then I can trade maybe a Briarbridge Tracker. And get my free land. And let's take ownership of the tree folk. And then don't quite have the mana to flash back, so we'll just cast one from hand. And 
and do we have enough to pressure Ren here? Probably don't want to send the low toughness spirits. Yeah, I think I'll just chill and then uh, set up an attack next turn. Don't want to lose all my creatures. They still have the Lair of the Hydra, which could apply a bit of pressure. Backup Chariot's not bad. So I'm going to want to get my Master of Winds online as soon as possible. But with triple counterpart in the graveyard, our opponent needs to kill my Mind Flayer before they can make any forward progress. They can eventually get to level 3 on Druid class and make a large creature as well. But yeah, this is exactly the matchup where Mind Flare shines. A matchup where there's large creatures involved and not too much removal. Another counterpart on top. Let's draw that and then get the Flying Master out there. Blizzard Brawl, I don't mind drawing either. Discards Island. And yeah, Embarrassment of Riches here. Let's say I flash back a counterpart. And then copy either another Master or Mind Flayer. I guess Mind Flayer stealing the troll. Looks good here. And set up some attacks. So the large tree folk, the 3 4. Probably still not sending the small toughness spirits, but that one can attack. And uh, it's probably good enough for now. They can let their planeswalker go. But then they miss out on the opportunity of making another tree folk and copying it. Or they can lose some tokens. Alright, opponent lets their planeswalker go. They are still at 38 life. So that buys them a little bit of time. But I uh, still don't really see a way out for them. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so we got to see our blue-green Croaking Creep stack in action. Got to copy lots of things with Croaking Counterpart, generate a ton of value. And yeah, pretty satisfied with how the deck turned out. Can still make a few modifications while testing the deck. Another card that is quite synergistic with Croaking Counterpart is the Augmenter Pugilist, which will still get that plus five plus five bonus as long as you control eight or more lanes. So especially synergistic if you have the full playset of Quandrix Cultivator in the deck as well. So there's definitely some cards like that that are worth testing out. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.